The Superhead Radio is a form of radio technology or technique that has dominated the radio market for nearly a hundred years. Everything from domestic broadcast radios to professional communications equipment and lots more. All of these have used the Superhead or Superheterodyne radio for many years. In this video we're going to look at what the Superhead Radio is, how it works, and then move on to see how radio receiver technology is advancing. The first question to ask is what actually is a superhet radio and what is its basic concept? In a superhet radio the radio signal is changed from its received frequency to a lower frequency before it's detected. To see how this happens the block diagram of the most basic superhet radio can be seen here. Basically the signals enter the RF amplifier in tuning stages where they're amplified and some broad tuning is provided. Then, along with a signal from an internal or local oscillator, they enter a mixer where they're converted to a fixed frequency section known as the intermediate frequency or IF. In this section, they are amplified and the majority of the selectivity is provided, and this removes signals from adjacent channels. Finally, the signals are demodulated and the resulting audio is amplified and passed to headphones or a loudspeaker or used in whatever way is needed. However, let's look at the individual stages in more detail to see how they work and what they do. The key circuit block is a mixer, or as it is also known, a multiplier. The concept of the superhead is to do, use a mixer and, a, and a, a local oscillator to down convert the signal to a lower frequency where it can be more easily processed and filtered. It's worth taking a little time to look at what a mixer is and how it works. A mixer is an electronic circuit in which two signals enter and they're multiplied together. The instantaneous voltage on each of the inputs is multiplied to give an output that's the product of the two inputs. The result of this is that signals with frequencies equal to the sum and difference of the two inputs are generated. To explain this a little further, let's take the example where there are two signals entering a mixer, one at a frequency of 1 MHz and the other at a frequency of 1.5 MHz. As we mentioned before, there will be two additional signals generated one at the difference frequency of 1.5 minus 1 MHz, which is 0.5 MHz, and the other at a frequency which is equal to the sum of the two input frequencies, in other words, at 1.5 plus 1 MHz, which is 2.5 MHz. Now let's see how this can be used within a radio receiver to mix a signal down to a fixed intermediate frequency. Taking the figures we used before, let's say the local oscillator is running at 1.5 MHz and the incoming radio signal is at 1 MHz. As before, we see that two new signals appear on the output of the mixer, one at 0.5 MHz and the other at 2.5 MHz. If we make a fixed frequency filter at a frequency of 0.5 MHz to fit on the output of the mixer, then only the signal at half a MHz will pass through. At this point we can note that the difference between the signal and the local oscillator must be equal to that of the intermediate frequency or IF filter. In this case it must be 0.5 MHz. The next issue is how to tune the receiver. This is actually quite simple. Let's see what happens if the local oscillator is shifted up to 1.6 MHz. Now we can see that a signal at 1.1 MHz will produce signals at 0.5 and 2.7 MHz. Again, only the signal at 0.5 MHz passes through the filter, so to tune the receiver, all we need to do is vary the local oscillator. The next thing to think about is what is called the image response within the radio. The image in a superhet receiver is when you down convert, you're actually receiving both the upper sideband and the lower sideband, which are offset by the difference between the input signal and the, the local oscillator. So you end up with these image frequencies that can cause interference because a, a, an interfering signal will be mixed right on top of your desired signal. The image signal is a critical issue within the radio. Let's again take the example where we have our incoming signal at 1.0 MHz and with the local oscillator set to 1.5 MHz. When these two signals enter the mixer they produce an output of 0.5 MHz as we saw before. However, there's another signal that can also produce an output at this frequency. If we have a signal at 2.0 MHz 
This will also produce an output at 0.5 MHz when mixed with the local oscillator. So we have two signals that can enter the intermediate frequency stage, one at 1.0 MHz and the other at 2.0 MHz. Here the unwanted signal is called the image signal. The unwanted image signal must be removed otherwise it will give rise to interference. To remove it a tuned circuit is added before the mixer to only accept the wanted signal. Normally an amplifier is also included to provide some gain before the mixer. When tuning the receiver the local oscillator and the RF tuning must move together or track as it's called. This was achieved in early radios by having a twin gang variable tuning capacitor. Modern radios will use electronic forms of tuning but these must still track together. The next area to take a look at is the intermediate frequency section. The function of the intermediate frequency is to be the place where most of the gain of the radio is placed and also uh, the intermediate frequency is typically a an amplifier of defined bandwidth which sets the receiving bandwidth of the radio. So for example for uh, an FM radio uh, the bandwidth would, would be about uh, 250 kilohertz and that's defined by filters in the intermediate frequency. The reason for having the IF on a fixed frequency is because it's possible to make very high performance filters in this way. It's in this section of the radio that the selectivity to reject signals on adjacent channels or frequencies is included. Older radios use tuned interstage coupling transformers and this was normally good enough for broadcast reception. It's also possible to use ceramic filters or in cases where high levels of selectivity are needed then crystal filters may be used. The IF is also the area that provides the majority of the gain of the radio so often two or three stages may be used. Once the signals have been filtered and amplified in the IF they are demodulated to recover the baseband information such as the audio from the signal. Different demodulators may be used according to the type of signal being received AM, SSB, FM and so forth. The recovered signal is then typically amplified and passed to a loudspeaker or headphones although it can be used in other ways as required. The Superhead radio has come a long way in its history and its technology is still developing. Modern Superheads use uh, digital processing techniques. Originally it was at audio frequencies but as technology has improved it's moved to IF frequencies. Uh, and that is also used for demodulation and filtering. The development of digital signal processing technology is still moving forward and new technologies like software defined radio are taking over. The Superhead though is still widely used and over many years since its invention it has given great service. For more information about the Superhead radio and other topics check out the links in the description below. You can also subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like the video please.